Yes. Um, I have just a general, like I'm in the middle of a project where we're sort of customizing a lot of the old buddy press for particular needs of one community. Would you recommend that I hold off <laughs> until 1.5 comes out? Because I'm wondering, you know, a lot of the things we're doing, it sounds like you're already making much yeah. easier in terms of menu options and things like that, changing some of the language, yeah. you know, the nomenclature that's built in. Uh, yeah, I, I would be developing against it right now. Um, I, like, I, the last plugin that I built from scratch, I didn't even test it on 1.2.9 until just okay. before I released it. Yeah, I, I'm done with that. I'm looking forward, that's one of the big reasons I'm looking forward, because I just want to put that in my past and not think about it anymore. So yes, the short answer is yes, because this is going to be out within a matter of weeks. So it's stable enough to develop it. Yeah. I mean, this is, one, one advantage of the fact that this has been in development for so damn long is that it actually is quite stable. Uh, you could, I, you shouldn't run a site on beta software, but you could. <laughs> yes. Does it work on mobile phones, and also is it a uh, uh, standard component? Oh, good. So we have two questions. Is it? So let me answer the second one first because that one is much. I feel much more cheerful about that one. Uh, the, <laughs> so we know the answer to the pros. Well, it's just a little bit more complicated than the first one. So standards compliance is something we work really hard on. Um, stand not only W three C standard compliance, which we're we're very good about this. But also uh, WordPress theme check. I mean, we are we pass with flying colors. We have nothing under any of the other any of the sections but pass. Um, we also pass. Um, what is the name of the the um, uh, accessibility standards? Yeah, we we pass. We we made sure that we have no warnings. So uh, we have we've tried to meet all the possible standards because we, what we want is for VP default to be a theme that you want to use. And if you're not going to use it, we want it to be. We want us to demonstrate the best possible theming for buddy tests so that you can go out and build your own themes or your own child themes and know that you're going to meet the standards. So the short answer for that is yes, we do meet standards. Um, as for your first question, does it work on mobile phones? This is not a, a responsive theme in the same way that 2011 is. Um, so it is pretty smart. I mean, it floats, for instance, and it's variable width. So if you view it on an iPad, things will drop appropriately, generally speaking. It's not really built for that. However, there are, there's a free plugin called BuddyPress Mobile. Um, which is developed by one of the one of the main contributors to BuddyPress. He helps out a ton, especially with front end stuff. And it's a it's a heavily JavaScript, very pretty implementation of BuddyPress that already works with BuddyPress 1.5, and it works great on mobile phones. So that's a freely available plugin. This developer is also working on a project called Bud iPhone. Get it? Uh, <laughs> which is a native iPhone app. That, is, that communicates with BuddyPress through some APIs that he built. So it will actually be able to store local data and it will be a totally native iPhone app. So it's gonna be really slick. So the, the options are out there, but you have, they don't come out of the box. This guy, the, the guy who develops this, his name, he goes by the handle Modem Looper. And Modem Looper recently told me, we're putting mobile support into BuddyPress 1.6. I don't care what I have to do about it. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully that happens. But in the meantime, you have great options in the plugin world. Yes. The question is: There a hosting company or something that provides enterprise support, like Opera does for uh, Google Chrome? I don't know of one that does it for BuddyPress. Actually, I don't really know of any that do it for WordPress, mainly because I, I'm the kind of person who does that. So, um, I don't. Does anybody know of any that does support specifically for BuddyPress? I, I don't know of any. You know, I mean, I know a fair number of developers who will do the initial development and who will you can keep on a retainer. Like I do that for some clients, but not. It's not like an enterprise level twenty four seven. Yeah, uh, it's it's a different model. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you there is there is there something like let's say Red Hat. I mean, Red Hat takes the Linux kernel and they kind of customize it a little bit and then they sell it and they provide uh, enterprise level support. Not for BuddyPress, and to my knowledge, not actually for WordPress. There are, hosted, there are hosting companies like Pagely, and Pagely does, they, they're not really support, but they do a lot of the management for you. Yeah, is, Pagely's great. Um, so, but I don't know of anything like that for BuddyPress. I, it, it's a cool idea. I, their Drupal has a BuddyPress competitor. They're a couple of years behind in development, but it's called Drupal Gardens. Is that it? Uh, Commons. Drupal Commons. That's what it's called. Drupal Gardens is something different. Yeah. Um, so, and they actually do have a hosted version of that, I think. 
Yeah, so I think there's a, I think there's a real business opportunity for somebody who wants to make the, the WordPress.com version of BuddyCrux, where it's a hosted thing you can sign up. That doesn't exist yet. Neither does an enterprise level support exist yet. But Steve. As you mentioned, a new DP default is light years <laughs> ahead of uh, uh, one, two, nine versions. Um, and when I upgraded um, a dev site on it, it did break my heavily customized 1.29 theme. Can you say what way it broke? It just, uh, I mean. It just totally looked unstyled? Yeah, it just unstyled. Okay. So here's, here's the thing. Um, this, is gonna be, this is gonna be technical, but so be it. So in the old, in the old way of theme of building BP default and the old way of recommending child themes, we recommended a CSS import rule. Import your parent child, your parent style sheet. And that's actually the way that WordPress uh, recommends that you do it. But some of the newer, more advanced themes are opting instead to enqueue their styles. And the advantage of that is then you can deregister, first of all. So if you have an import rule, then you can't override that. You just have to override the styles with more styles, which creates a lot more uh, a, a lot more payload for, for your HTTP request. I mean, it's bad news. So they're in queue, kind of like you in queue scripts. You can also make them in, uh, dependent on each other. So it's possible, for instance, to if you have a plugin to make to enqueue your style so it's dependent on the BP default style and all sorts of fancy stuff like that. So it's a, it's a great improvement, but what it means in the short term is that you have to modify your existing theme to take out the import rule and then in your functions.php and queue your own stuff. So it's two, two little things and then it will, the style will come back. Well it does, but to a point, but it, it does, it, it, 129 is like all hard coded tables. And you just, oh, you keep saying that, that's not really true. But it is, but it is true, but it is, but it is. And, and you, you, you mentioned that you, uh, most of the stuff is in spans and floats. It just, it'd be, I guess my question to you is, is it, would it, uh, is it ever been on the table to not name it BB default? Yeah. Because it may yeah. break existing uh, yeah. upgrades. It, it, was, it was discussed, but again, we have the problem of having, how many themes can we really maintain? And so if we just announced end of life and we have a new thing that's not compatible at all with your child themes, then we raise the rack, uh, we raise rankles with a whole other group of people who are like, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't upgrade to BuddyPress 1.5. Now you can do it, you just have to put a little elbow grease into it. I mean, I'll tell you, but it, so I was showing you before um, the CUNY Academic Commons. So this was originally a BuddyPress 1.0 theme, and it was BPSN parents. I don't know if, if any of you were using BuddyPress but then, which was BP, BP default to 1.2 makes BPSN parent. I mean, we are making huge leaps and bounds, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I rewrote this for BP default 1.2, and it took many hours. I have a development version of this for BP 1.5, and it has taken me, uh, it took me about one hour to do the necessary conversions, it, even less, half an hour. So I'm good at this, I mean, I know all about it, so, but it is not an enormous amount of work to do the customization. So we, we did discuss it, but we decided that it's better to give people the ability to, the knowledge that they can upgrade with a little bit of work, rather than saying, we're done with that, you have to start from scratch with a new theme. Now, it is, it's, it's a wish of ours that we could ship BuddyPress with more than one theme. Like, we would have BP default, which is all the bells and whistles theme, but we'd also have a minimalist theme that you could just sort of build off of, and it would give you maybe some skeleton code to work with. Uh, but that, Patch is welcome, you know, if you wanted to, if you, if somebody wants to build it, that would be great. It's just a lot, it takes a lot of time. Will there be documentation to, for the upgrade? Yeah, so let me, let me point you to a couple of resources that exist already. The first one is the BuddyPress development blog, bpdevel.wordpress.com. And I, you'll see the sticky post at the top, with my eyeball on it. It says, over the next few weeks, a series of posts will appear on this blog featuring developer notes on upgrading your plugins and themes for BuddyPress 1.5. Follow it at this peg. So I've written you know, a handful so far, and more are in draft and are ready to go up. Uh, and these are little bite-sized nuggets, like here's how you need to change how you concatenate links for groups, for instance, little, little bitty things. Or here's how you need to change, uh, this is something, oh, this is about activity posts corresponding to comments on custom post types. So very small little things. Um, this is one place to go. This is very developer heavy. I, you know, this, if you're not a developer, you won't care about most of the things on here. I'm trying to keep this very developer specific. The second place is the buddypress.org support forums. 
Um, if you're starting at 1.5, is the develop, is the documentation pretty good? Uh, the documentation is in progress. So uh, let me show you this first because this is more for transitions, and then I'll show you what's what's becoming available. So there is already discussion in here about. See here's BuddyPress Mobile. BuddyPress Mobile for 1.5 needs testing. So people are talking about the transition and how it's working for popular plugins. Um, and you can get a lot of help and a lot of people posting out to resources that they're creating for, um, for existing things. Now, the final resource, and really the one that should be, that, that will be the, the, the best one, is the codex, the BuddyPress codex, which is codex.buddypress.org. <laughs> Now, right now, this is mostly based on, on uh, old stuff. And most of the stuff actually isn't really going to change. Like all of this extending, some, like some of this will be different. Theme developments, this will all be the same. There'll be a few tweaks to the BP default section. But we have a section at the top here called releases. And this has some developer and designer information, for instance. This is a place where all sorts of links and all sorts of information is being collected on things that are changing. So this is telling you, for instance, about that NQ thing that I was just telling Steve about. Um, so the Codex is another place where you can look. This is volunteer supported. There's about four or five people who work really hard to do this. So if you find things that you want changed, it's a wiki. You should edit it. Um, but yeah, we're working on providing as much documentation as possible. The problem I've had is uh, spammy sign-ups. Eventually, uh, Steve put me on something so I could I now have to screen everybody as they sign on, which I think he does too, going to the yeah. NYC. Um, this uh, one, will that plugin work with the, uh, whatever it's called, uh, with the upgrade? What is the plugin? BP registration options. It'll, I think it's going to work. I don't know what that one does, but um, uh, most plugins will work, will just work. Uh, well, uh, well, about a third of the plugins will just magically work. Another third of them have already been updated so that they will work. Uh, and then the rest of them actually need like two or three code tweaks. And I'm like, we're like hounding the, the developers to say, please upgrade these things. Because it generally only takes like five minutes to upgrade it to make sure it's compatible. So is there a chance of a sort of an Akismet style thing to like just well, possible? Well, Akismet doesn't do registration sign up. And the problem is, is the reason is that it's, it's in a way much harder to do than content sign up. Well, it's easier in a way too, but algorithmically speaking. Um, we don't, the, the one spam registration prevention tool that we have with BuddyPress is the activation email. So that, that is supposed to prevent spam signups, automated spam signups, because you get an email and then you have to click on the activation link. So that's the one thing that's built in. Um, there are a couple of other ones available. There's one called BP Humanity, and I believe what that does is it adds, it allows you to add specific questions like what, what do you get when you add the number four to the number 18, that kind of thing. Uh, I think there, there's also some CAPTCHA things that will work. Um, there's also some Honeypot plugins that allow you to... I, I haven't found, you know, I tried a few of those, and I didn't yeah. find out that I'm having much success with them. Well, you haven't changed the way you use register in any way, right? No, we, right. Use, we don't. Yeah, but here's the thing: we don't actually do registration. Right. Yeah. We, we're, it's WordPress registration. So, I mean, right now, I just look at the profile, and the profile has like junk in it. Yeah. You know, so the, 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 to really the registration plugin will work. The registration plugin will work. All it does is put a user in in a in a default state. And check their IP. And that's really all. It, it, it work. shows their IP address. How about the Chinese flag? Oh, I see. <laughs> I mean, that, that's <laughs> just the WordPress plugin. For new users, so you could sort of say, okay, someone can join, but they can't. They can't post it. Until, until what? Until you've, uh, you know, you wait oh. three days. Well, to yeah, I don't know if there's a WordPress plugin that does that out of the box. I built one just recently because, like I said, I have a new baby, and so I wanted to build a picture site. That would, but I, I didn't want to use Facebook, Ugh. but I wanted to, but I wanted to share pictures in an easy way. But I also didn't want to have them be totally public because I, you know I have friends who have weird stories about putting their pictures on Flickr and then they get like every picture of their naked baby gets favorited by some creepy people. So I was like, oh, so. so anyway, uh, so I built something like that. I wrote a plugin called um, Unconfirmed, which is uh, if you've ever if you've ever been the uh, administrator for a WordPress uh, multi-site installation, you know that users have to activate their accounts, but half the time they get caught in spam filters, half the time they don't know how to click the link, sometimes the activation key doesn't work for some reason. This gives, you, this gives the admin a tab on the back end that allows them to click confirm or resend activation email. So it gives you some, WordPress doesn't have that for some reason, this gives it to you. I hacked this a little bit so that it would do what you're describing. In other words, somebody signs up 
And the, instead of being, having immediate access, I get an email saying, this person is awaiting activation.